lovely to see you here. And you, Artsy. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much for agreeing uh, to start this uh, podcast uh, interview series on Positive Harmony. Uh, so would you like to start off with introducing yourself and what you do? Yes, yeah, sure. I mean, um, my name is Stefan Ball. I'm uh, a director here at the Batch Centre in England, and um, I'm mainly responsible for education around the world and for registering practitioners. And um, I've written a few books on the remedies and so on. So I've been, I've been kind of involved in batch remedies since about the mid 19, well, actually, probably early 1990s was the first kind of contact. So I've been around quite a long time now, and I've been at the centre itself since 1996. Excellent. So you've got a, like a vast knowledge and a lot of experience using the flowers as well as... I like to think so. <laughs> Either that or I've been making the same mistakes for years, so I'm not sure where it... <laughs> well, I've read uh, most of your books and uh, I've really enjoyed it. I think, uh, especially when I first was introduced to the Batch Flowers, um, you know, your, your main book, uh, which is uh, all to do with the remedies and understanding of the workbook, I thought it was a very uh, easy way to be introduced to the Batch Flowers and very practical. Yeah, I tried to make it. I tried to make it practical. I mean, my, my background um, involves... Uh, studying languages at various points and the BBC uh, I don't know if they still do but they used to have like a serial they always they always had like a, a, a set of books on any particular language and they always had like a complete course and I, I kind of used that as my inspiration so rather than do a book that just sort of said um, you know remedies in order 138 and then a bit like that I tried to kind of cut it up so you introduce it in small sections and you have activities and you have you know little side side panels with bits of interesting information to try and keep people interested and make it kind of more digestible rather than just sitting down and reading 30 remedies so that was the thinking behind the workbook so yeah I'm, I'm quite pleased with how, how it worked out and I think a lot of people have been introduced to the system through that so it's been successful exactly and especially because you give like uh tasks to do and yeah it, i think that makes it more personal um, yes indeed yeah and I, and I think that's that's important because because otherwise it becomes a little bit dry yeah. um and it's you know you're just you're kind of reading about plants all the time and you maybe don't feel that connection to yourself whereas if you kind of get people encourage people to think about their own lives in relation to the to a particular remedy and maybe use that remedy if they need to, then it, it becomes more internalized, the kind of understanding of the system, which is, you know, in the end, what it's all about. I mean, it's not, the system isn't really about flower remedies, it's about people. Uh, so it's important that people kind of, you know, engage with it on that level. I agree. I, I don't think I'll be um, sitting here talking to you if it wouldn't be for the batch flowers. Uh, it, I literally think uh, they, the rescue remedy saved my life and uh save my marriage as well <laughs> so, uh, okay well that's, that's good to know <laughs> a big impact in my life and I, I, it, one day doesn't go by when i don't think which remedy uh, i should take yeah. i was going to ask you questions but i just wanted to say one of the most interesting concepts i read in your book it, it was in your teach yourself the batch flowers mm -hmm. was, correct me if i'm wrong but metaforms i think you you termed that uh, metaforms i think you you wrote about okay them. You oh, metaphors, yes, yes. Yeah, so you don't actually have to take the remedy sometimes if you don't have access to them, but just thinking about them and the benefits, uh, that in itself helps to create that harmony and balance, which I think is fascinating. Yeah, I think, it, it, yeah, and it's actually, it, it's actually kind of obvious in a way, um, because, okay, well, when, you, when you take a remedy, the reason you take a remedy is because you're in, an, you're in a negative emotional state. Um, which is stopping you from kind of moving forward and learning. Um, so you take the remedy to help you over that. Now, if you know you're in that negative state and you already know what it feels like to move past it. So, let, I mean, take a concrete example. If you're, um, if you're in a hornbeam state, say you're in a hornbeam state every Monday morning when you get to work, you always feel like that. So, okay, you have, you have difficulty getting over that. So you can take hornbeam, which will help you get started. Now, after a few weeks of doing that, You'll get to work on a, on a Monday and you'll be reaching for your hornbeam. And you'll be saying, well, actually, I already know the state of mind I need to be in to get past this. So I won't take the remedy, I'll just do it. Yeah. So, you, so you've kind of 
you've learned from taking the remedy and thinking about your situation how to manage it for yourself so in the end you, you probably don't need to take the remedy don't, maybe that in six months time there'll be a particular job which you really don't want to do and you'll get into work and then i just can't and then you can take the remedy again but you but you you use it as and when you need to rather than you know becoming like a, a kind of a crutch so yeah i think i think that applies to all the remedies yeah. you know but once you know what the positive feeling feels like you can choose to kind of switch that on uh, rather than stay on the negative and, and that way you become better balanced overall yeah i feel that a lot with beach when I'm entering a situation where I feel no no one is going to understand me and I have to be tolerant and I, and I just yeah. have it with me and because uh, usually I'm quite a tolerant person but sometimes you're just put in that situation where you just say why can't you just uh, be logical and uh, just yeah. think about it gives you that that tolerance so no I, and I have I have I have exactly the same thing um, with impatience and patience for me because um, you know I, I am naturally quite an impatient person. Um, and I still get impatient sometimes, but then when I do, I kind of see the funny side of it. <laughs> and, don't, and rather than sticking in that, I say, well, actually, no, I know what I need to be doing now, and I know not to get upset about this and just relax. And so you, you kind of, um, yeah, you, you, well, that's part of learning, though, isn't it? It's part of learning about who you are and learning about your life and your feelings. Yeah, that's what that was my next question uh, about. Uh, you, you said the remedies are for people rather than the flowers mm. in itself. And then you spoke about uh, the funny aspect of it, which I think is, is extremely important because when somebody talks about their emotional upheaval and the stress that they're going through, it's it's all very negative. Yeah. Uh, yet the, the flowers are all about the positive aspect. So yeah. um, do you want to just quickly mention about how, it, you know, I, I've, I've spoken about how it's helped me. How, you've been doing this much longer and also you, you kind of eat, breathe, sleep the remedies with your work and everything so how has it if, if it's okay with you how has it changed your life as a person and uh... um i think it's i think it just moved me on i mean i mean if i go back to when when i first got involved um the reason i got involved was because my, my wife actually knew um or knows judy howard who's you know the kind of director of the center and um they were looking for someone to to write to to um to help record a, 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 a what's the word a cassette a cassette on the remedies and they wanted a male voice and so you know chris had already got me involved in doing some a little advert, advert thing so she suggested me so i did that and that's kind of the first contact i had with them now at that time i was uh, a mature student i'd gone back to university and was doing a, a degree in french and spanish and I was very shy, painfully shy, to the extent where if we, ha if we, you know, every so often we had to do a seminar, so I had to lead a seminar. And I'm only talking about a room with maybe six or seven other students and, and a, a lecturer. And I would have to present something for half an hour or whatever, and then they do, everyone would discuss it. Um, and I was mortified. But if I had to, if I had what I needs to do, it was literally in my mind for you know three or four months. So this was coming up, and, and really didn't, didn't, never got, never enjoyed it, um, and was always kind of gripped by kind of nervousness and fear about the whole thing. And one of the first uh, things I did when when I got to know about the system through doing that set was was um, was to take mimulus and to kind of you know and and they. It was amazing how it kind of moved me on, and I think since then I've, I've very I've actually only very occasionally made up whole treatment bottles. I have done that from time to time. Most of my use to remedies, and, and this possibly is because I'm I'm in a fortunate position where the remedies are always available here, so it's not it's very easy. Um, but the way I've always used them, or mostly used them, has been literally kind of one or two remedies at a time for particular issues. So I've almost from the beginning seen it not as a way of not as a way of addressing lots of negatives, but as a way of finding a positive. So so rather than saying how do I how do I approach a seminar that I where I don't feel fear, I was thinking more about well how do I feel confident about this seminar? How do I go into this feeling that I can do this and not being kind of overly shy or nervous and all the rest of it. Um, so I've always seen it almost as a kind of a finding a solution rather than focusing on a problem. 
And I think if you go into that with that mind, with that mindset, you you do kind of look at the positive. Now, the, I mean, the negative side is is still necessary, and, and obviously, you know, in the courses that that, um, that are taught around the world, um, the teachers will always talk about the negative uh, indications for remedies. But then you need to know those because you need to know when to take a remedy. But when you're taking the remedy, ideally, you're thinking about the positive that you want to come from it because that's really where you're steering. It's a bit like if you're, if, you're, if, you're, if you're riding a bicycle, you don't, and you're riding a bicycle along a road next to a ditch, don't look at the ditch all the time, because if you constantly look at the ditch, you're more likely to go into it. If you look at the road ahead, it's very easy just to keep going without coming in, without crashing. And it's very similar with using the remedies and things. Yeah, it's really interesting what you say, because it's all about the language that we use to address ourselves and what we're feeling. Uh, if we're always focusing on the negative, uh, how how do you expect to get better anyway? Well, yes, but I, I mean, um, we do see sometimes people who have literally been taking the same mix of remedies for twenty years, yeah. um, and I think that's that's what's happening there um, because they've kind of they've they've got themselves into a state of mind when they think, well, this is who I am. All these negative feelings is who I am. So therefore, I'll take my remedy every day. But every morning, they're still thinking, oh, that's where I am. And the key, I think, is to move beyond that and to just say, you know, who am I in my positive state? And focus on that. And then, and then you can actually make progress. I think. Exactly. And I find it very interesting when I was uh, studying and even when I'm reading now, it's looking at sometimes when I talk to people as well, it's not always about who, wh what's happening in your life as well. It's what you would like to strive to become. And the positive qualities you admire and some of the DLs that you are striving to kind of uh, cultivate. So uh, it's it's all about self-development, but also it helps you to accomplish what you would like to be. Uh, yeah. Sometimes that, that's where the magic is, I guess, isn't it? It can be, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, it's, it's it, as with everything, it's a balance, I think. I mean, I mean, I, I, I think you're right. I, there's, there's a, you know, that if you are, if you want to be a particular way, the best way to begin that process is to start to behave like that yeah. um, and the remedies can help you do that at the same time i think i think there has to be a measure of what's the word um humility about it um i mean if i if i in my situation where i was kind of very nervous about, about giving talks and presenting in front of people if I had set out my goal as being, you know, within a year's time, I want to be addressing 20,000 people at a conference somewhere and, and uh, you know, <laughs> just making the thing so unreal and unbelievable and so far removed from where I currently was. I think, I think if you do that, you are setting yourself up um, to fail. So, so, I mean, take another example, someone who, um, who may be, uh, what's that? Let's think. So, someone who 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 um who is who is having trouble kind of learning from their experiences. So that would be a chestnut a person in a chestnut. I'd say someone who's having trouble learning from their experiences. Well, okay, you could say, okay, well, starting tomorrow, I'm going to notice everything about everybody and never make another mistake. But that's completely unrealistic. So what you need to do instead is to is to start with where you are and think you know what's a positive what's a positive nudge I can take what's what's the point beyond where I am to something more, more positive and that would simply be maybe um, tomorrow I'm going to look back over my diary and see where I've gone wrong and then I'm going to pick three things where I can say right I'm not going to make those three mistakes again and that now is measured and it's kind of within reach so rather than striving for the stars you're striving for something that's maybe just next door to where you are and that starts you off on that path and I think the thing with the remedies is, is it, it is a path and I don't think I don't think it ever really ends nobody actually reaches the end of their path where they say right now everything's sorted and nothing can ever happen to me again because life always happens Yes. And so you, 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 we, we need to be kind of um, realistic, but positive, and move on that way. I, think. I completely agree. But that's the whole the onion peeling effect as well. Sometimes we yeah. take remedies that we're not ready for, and uh, they make us do things that we, we're not willing to do yet because we're taking that cute, those huge leaps. Uh, but that in itself gives you the ability to say, look, just just wait. 
uh, and then just hold on to what you have at the moment and then as you said baby steps i, I, I think that's i think i think a step at a time and I, the, the onion peeling um idea is a good is a good one because um you're never you're never trying to sort out your whole life and existence yeah. now you're always you're always looking at what's what's there today and how do i move it forward a little bit so it's always a gradual process and of course the thing about the onion peeling metaphor is it is it, when you look at the outside of something you don't really know what's inside you can take a wild guess but the chances are you'll be wrong if you if you take what you see and work with that then over time if there are more things underneath that becomes revealed so uh, i mean it, the whole mess i mean in a way every everything i've i've written about them has been about um taking time which is kind of ironic given that i often need impatience myself but that maybe that's <laughs> maybe that's relevant um that the main lesson i've taken from it is that you need to take time and not try to kind of rush forward um so it applies when you're when you're a student for example i mean we get a lot of students who, who sign up for a level one course and immediately they're saying you know what i really want to do is be a teacher uh, and often often the most important thing you can say to someone at that point is actually don't think about that think about your level one course think about how you're going to learn the 38 remedies what you're going to do to bring them into your life all that kind of thing and then move forward stage by stage because you might reach a stage where actually actually i'm happy there and i, I don't really want to teach this i want to do something else with, with what i've gained so rather than set yourself this kind of long-term process set yourself a a short a shorter term goal but which is in a positive direction because it may you know like a plant growing you can't plant a seed and say in 10 years time this is going to be up there what you do is you plant the seed and you water it and you take care of it now you get the process right and then you see how it grows and it might surprise you and, and you know and it's quite nice when life surprises us and we end up doing something we weren't particularly expecting to do no, definitely i i completely agree and i think uh when, when i initially came across the batch prize as well i said it takes so many years to qualify why when it's so simple yeah. uh, but i completely understand and, and i think uh, the metaphor you used about the, the the flowers it's it's very appropriate i always think like it's really important to create a good foundation of the remedies yeah and every remedy is so different even mm. though it's simple it just depends where you are at your life and what you're striving to achieve and all yeah. the external forces. So it's fascinating. And I love the thing about time because you need to take it and sit with it rather than jump and then regret it and then come back. Yeah. By one. <laughs> and that's the thing. And, 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 you know, it comes back to what, what, what I said initially really about, about the system in the end, isn't about flower and it's about people yeah. and the system itself is simple, but it's working all the time with people and people have, really complicated and really you know everyone is moving in different directions at the same time and there's all, all kinds of little conflicts and kind of little bits where you have to kind of steer a course so the remedies can help you through that but but really what you're doing i mean if you think about you know the, the courses i mean like you, level one is a presentation of the 38 remedies well then you need to learn them yeah. And then level two is where you can fine tune your knowledge. But once you've fine tuned it, you need to actually apply it in the real world. And then when you get to a point where you're thinking maybe about being a practitioner, if that's what you want to do, um, by that point, you're not really looking at, you're not really thinking about remedies anymore. You're thinking about people, which is like a huge complex thing. And then you become a teacher, it's even more complex. <laughs> so it's, it's, you don't know when you're starting out with like your little list of 38 remedies. If, if, if that's where you're going to be led so so yeah take time same same message really yeah and i think it's fascinating what you said about um how it's a journey uh, because i i strongly believe that even towards the end of your life and i and i do this with friends like i, I just if somebody's dying i give them a rescue uh, remedy because you even when you're going through the, the end stages the remedies can still help to allow that passage to go through more smoothly which which i think yeah. it's not many things you actually can offer no i think that's absolutely true i mean i mean it goes back i, I mentioned i've been at the center since 1996 one of the first um things i got involved with actually was i can't remember the guy's name but there was someone who wrote a book called dying well yeah um which was quite, I think there's been a few others since then, but in that time, that was quite a new concept. And um, 
and he came along. I was, I was so impressed by him because he, he wasn't he wasn't a batch practitioner. He was he would obviously include batch among the things he was writing about, and we had a chat about it. But um, but the whole thing then was was fitting very very much with, with the kind of the approach of, that Dr. Batch had, and we have. Um, it's all about it's all about the system. It's all about getting the uh, encouraging people to live to their fullest at every moment, and that includes when you're when you're passing on, um, because that's although that's an end for one person, it's actually part of lots of other stories. All the people who are related or friends of the person who's passing on, they're they're all involved in that story too. So everyone can actually see that as a natural life stage, which of course it is. Um, and although you know I'm not hopefully <laughs> not facing that for a few years i'd like to think that when i do i'll be able to see it in a positive way rather you know, because it is natural that we all get to that point in life so it's not something i think i, d I don't agree with the the, the poet um there's a the famous poem rage rage against the dying of the light i'm not sure i agree with that i, I think there's a point where you don't rage anymore there's a point where you need to kind of accept because the light's dying anyway so um the best thing to do is to kind of find a positive in that rather than just get angry about it. Yeah, and surrendering, isn't it? It's all about kind of accepting and surrendering. Well, yes, and I think it's, it's actually important that we, you know, we all pass on our after time because if we didn't, then our children and their children wouldn't have any, wouldn't have room to live their lives. I think, you know, if you, if you love your children, I'm sure we all do, then we, we need to, um, we need to learn to let go a little bit of particular points in our life. Definitely. And just before we finish off, so wh which book would you recommend, um, you know, for anybody that's starting off on their journey to discover their own selves and learn more about? I think if you're just starting out, I, I, mean, I, I mean, we've talked about my own workbook, which I think is good if you really want to learn the system. But if you're just looking for like a, a simple introduction to get started, um, it's probably not the best book. Probably the best book. Um, there's a, there's a book called uh, Step by Step, Bachelor and Miss Step by Step by Judy uh, Howard, which is just a very simple, straightforward introduction. You have a list of the 38 remedies in order, and that's really all you need to get started. I'd also recommend The 12 Healers, um, which is Dr. Batch's own book. Um, it is, it is you know, it was written in, in the 1930s and it's got the language from the 1930s. So it's, it's a little bit, it might be a little bit of an odd read for people these days, but I still think it's important because actually they, they, those are the most simple and straightforward um, accounts of the remedies, even to this day, I think. Um, and it's nice, I think, to touch base with the, with the kind of the, the initial part. And you can actually get that book free these days. There's a, there's a download on our website, for example, where you can get that. Um, and it's been translated into all kinds of different languages. So yeah, I'd say step by step, and 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 that will be a perfect way to kind of introduce yourself to you. Definitely, and you you've also written a very good book for animals as well, which which I think uh, I've written. Yes, yeah, yeah. There's there's a there's a there's a few actually. I mean, there's a few. There's, there's three three books. Um, there's Bachelor and his for Animals, which uh, Judy and I wrote together. There's also a book, Emotional Healing for Cats. But the one I'd recommend actually is is. Um, Emotional healing for horses and ponies. I thought so. And, and the reason I recommend that one is because we wrote that um, by the that was the third book we wrote, and by then we'd made contact with an animal behaviorist called Heather Simpson, who was uh, who was um, very very skilled at working with animals of all kinds, and she had a lot of input on that book. And I think I think that book is actually has got more about animal behavior and more helpful things about animal behavior. And although it's about horses and ponies, the concepts actually can be applied to any species. Um, so, so the book talks about, for example, understanding how, how horses live in the wild. Well, if you, if you apply that to horses, you can apply that to any other animal. You can look at how wolves live in the wild. And once you understand that, you can begin to understand what's going on in your dog's head, for example. So I think the concepts are actually in, in, you know, are good in that in that book, and that, that's the one I always recommend to people who are interested in animals, even though even if their prime focus isn't horses. Excellent. And lastly, three tips how somebody can achieve positive harmony through the remedies, or any any. Um, we've probably we've probably we've probably covered them already. <laughs> I, mean, I think the first <laughs> the first and most important one 
<clears throat> is um, is to let the remedies do the work. Uh, don't try and don't don't you know try to shortcut the the process. Don't try and you know select for your soul <laughs> now. Think about where you are today and just take it on a very kind of simple level to let the remedies do the work on that. Um, take your time. Don't don't sort of um, don't try to again shortcut the process. I think I think sometimes the the one of the images I used I used once in in a book was was about a labyrinth. So if you think about mazes and labyrinths, there's a whole um, ancient tradition of seeing labyrinths as a as a, a symbol for spiritual growth and spiritual journeys and personal development of all kinds. And this goes across all cultures. Every I think every country in the world has got a version of this. Um, so it's something basic to, to human psychology. Um, and the, the whole point of a labyrinth is that, you know, the shortest way to get to the center is just to go walk across the boundaries and just go straight to the center. But if you do that, you miss out on the process and the process of walking the labyrinth, which involves of, often involves kind of going around in circles, getting closer slowly. Sometimes it involves backtracking. Sometimes you're led down paths you weren't expecting. All of that is part of, of, of kind of learning from life. And I think that fits in very, very much with Dr. Bash's philosophy, which was that when things go wrong, we're being given an opportunity to learn. Um, now, someone can come along and say, oh, you should do this. And they might be right and you do this, but you've not learned from doing it wrong. Doing it wrong is often important. So, um, again, take time, allow the process to happen, allow it to take you somewhere you weren't expecting uh, and you'll get um, a lot, a lot more um, from it. And I think probably the the, the final kind of tip, if you like, is is don't aim to be perfect, um, because you almost certainly never will be. Um, the only the only thing we can we can hope for, I think, uh, uh, certainly in this life, is is that we we kind of leave with a little bit more wisdom and a little bit more understanding, a little bit more, a little bit more kindness than we came into the world. And if we do that, then we've probably done as much as we can expect to do. Well, thank you so much, uh, Stefan. I'm really grateful Pleasure, for, uh, for all your guidance and all your pearls of wisdom, which I'm sure we <laughs> can uh, put into action. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you very much and good, good luck with the podcast. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. See you again. See you.